What's up dudes, Chooch back with another one. Today we're getting into a full review of the Beagode M10 Ford. This is this little wheel right here. This thing is awesome, I've loved this thing. And for the price, you cannot go wrong. It's even coming in at $850 now. This little wheel is sick. I think this is a great wheel for kids, for beginners, all the way up to somebody that's been into the hobby for many years, like myself. I've gotten great enjoyment out of this thing. Trail riding this thing, riding it in the city, hitting jumps on it, doing everything in between. This thing is so much fun. I'm gonna do a full review on it, tell you all about it, and tell you if you should get it, why you should get it, and the type of person that might find this thing to be a total blast. But anyways, this is the M10 4 right here. This is mine, and I love it, dude. This thing is so sick. Check it out. Power this baby on, and it just rips, dude. Like, it is so much fun. Check it out. And it's so, the cool thing about this thing is it's so easy to ride. And for somebody that wants to get into the hobby, I think it's a great starting point. Um, I really do. Like now that, now that I've had mine for a while, it is a great beginner wheel all the way to advanced because it's, it's powerful, man. Go backwards on it and ride it in reverse and do all the cool tricks. So M104 is a total blast. Great wheel, man. For the price, you really can't go wrong. And I think anybody will love it. Let's talk about it. All right, so this is the Beagode M104. A little miniature electric unicycle with a lot of power, guys. And this thing is totally deceiving. It is, out of all electric vehicles in the world, this small electric vehicle probably packs the most power and most speed in it for the smallest package. And that's what I love about it. It's so tiny, but you can literally, you can fit this in a backpack, guys. Fold it up, fit it in a backpack, but you can get 28 miles per hour out of it on a full charge, and then you can go at least 22 miles of trail riding on this thing, probably about 20 miles of all out, full send city riding on this thing at 25 miles an hour, but it is this tiny, dudes, and it weighs nothing. So. It literally weighs 28 pounds, dude. This thing is tiny, small, but you can literally get on it and ride it like the actual vehicle. Check it out. It's crazy, dude. And like, the potential of this, dude, is like a last mile vehicle to be able to park anywhere and just drive this into town or anything like that is just sick, dude. It's so much fun. It's such a good wheel. I'm in my house slippers riding it right now, but you can, Jump it, spin on it, ride it backwards. Check out the headlight, dude. It has a good headlight on it. And you can adjust the headlight up and down. You do some rock crawling, get the rock lights, or send it for a nice good beam going out. But dude, it's unbeatable for the price, I think. And now they're offering it at 850 bucks, dude, for the 300 watt hour version. And only 1,180 bucks for the this one, the 750 watt hour version, which is awesome. But the acceleration on it, check this out, look at this watch. Crazy for a little wheel like this, crazy. You can sit down and ride it, do all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm gonna take this thing out and show you exactly what it can do. We're gonna take it on the trails, take it in the city, and show you exactly what the M104 can do and go for a full review of this little thing because I think it's awesome for the price. This little wheel is so much fun, dudes. I think anybody should add one to their fleet if they're an EUC enthusiast. Links below if you wanna get one, check it out. So much fun.
This is a little wheel right here, dude. It's so sick. Check it out. Because I unboxed it. But this is the little ripper. What's up dudes, Chooch, back with another one out here on the B-Goat M104. Now this little electric unicycle has really impressed me guys, and it's one that I've been really enjoying ri riding on every bit of terrain, man. I've really enjoyed this wheel. Um, for, for what it is, I honestly have had a great time with it, and I feel like it's uh, more of a, it's more of a well-rounded wheel than people would have suspected. It's, it literally is like, um, kind of pushing that edge between a novelty wheel and an actual, like, legitimate nice, electric nice unicycle. Um, it really is. It's really right on that fringe right there to where this is almost um, where I would consider it like a, you know, legitimate, full-on, full-scale, um, you know, able to do what you want to do electric unicycle. But it's also kind of that novelty wheel where it's just so small. Um, there's, you know, other wheels arguably that'd be more stable, um, you know, better battery life on it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But this thing for your, the price you pay and what you get is just so good, dude. And I've had a, a great time with it. Um, been riding it on trails, taking it in the city. I've made a little backyard uh, jump course for it where you see right here, hitting jumps with it. Now that's really fun. Being able to just have. That's crazy. That's crazy. That was terrifying, bro. M10 Mega Gap. Like a small wheel like this, you can. I made this whole little track in my backyard right here, and this wheel is just so much fun. Fooling around right in the backyard on it. Um, you can ride it long distance too. You can actually take this thing legit trail riding and do long trails, man. I'd be comfortable doing like it may, probably like a 20 mile loop of an off road trail on this little wheel, like no problem. And that is just, if you think really think about that, if you're doing like single track trail, you do 20 miles on this little thing, just think about like, I mean, great, real. Like, that's crazy. I mean, think about it. That is crazy. Being able to do a 20-mile trail on something this small right here um, is just wild. Uh, and the speed on it's great, guys, especially for off-road. It's going to be more than you're going to want for off-road riding on this thing. It, you can get it up to about, um, about 28 miles an hour. Like, if you're really on it, guys, on the throttle pushing it, and you're under, like, 180 pounds, and it's fully charged, you can push it up to about 28. But it... Once you are below like 90% battery on it, you can expect like 25 miles an hour out of it consistently. And you're on an 11 inch wheel right here. So it's called the M10-4. Like the inner diameter of the wheel is pretty much 10 inches, um, but the um, actual diameter of the, the wheel once the tire's on there and everything is 11 inches. So it's about an 11 inch wheel right here. So just for kind of a size idea. Um, and all the big electric unicycles that you typically see, those are like, you know, 19, 20 inch wheels. Like the Inmotion V13, that's a 22 inch wheel, for example. Um, it's just, a lot. A, this is a lot smaller than a lot of the electric unicycles. I mean, you see that right here. It almost looks ridiculous um, riding such a small thing. But once you get used to it, it it's cruises, dude. And if you want to pick one up, uh, the Alien Rides link below, guys, they have them in stock, ready to ship right now. And you can actually get them from Alien Rides, guys, for like 830 bucks now. They have a, a lower battery option on there for a 300 watt hour version. If you're not trying to break pretty, the bank on this so thing and you just want to get a outside, lower... Guys. It literally um, looks, it looks so tiny outside. It's just a lower watt hour um, than... Because the one I, I, I'm on right here, uh, this one's like 760 watt hours. Or like 700 watt hours, something like that. It's the, the higher watt hour one is the one I'm riding. Uh, but I think if you get this, you should probably go with the higher watt hour one. Just because the whole point of this wheel is essentially just to have all that power in a small form factor, really. I mean, that's what makes it so much fun is to have so much range and to be able to get so much speed out of such a small wheel for so long. To get such a high speed out of such a small wheel for such long range is why you would get this in the first place, I think. But if you want to just get this for kids, I would you can get that 300 watt, uh, watt hour option. So if you're just getting this for your kids and they don't, you know, leave the backyard riding it around on there, I think that's a great idea. I mean, really, think about that. That's a, a great little wheel for a kid. This um, 830 bucks. 
I mean, the best little kid wheel you could ever imagine right here. I mean, you, you, you teach your kids how to ride this, any kid that's under, um, like under eight, you know, eight years old, dude, and they could get incredible on this little thing. I mean, doing jumps, really riding it hard just because their weight is low and it would fit them perfectly. Uh, and especially if you get like the 300 watt hour version, it would be even lighter, lighter weight. And so it would be the absolute perfect kid wheel. Um, I mean, you couldn't find anything better. But if you're an adult, I'd definitely get the um, $1,100 one that has the higher watt hour battery in it. But the links are below, guys. If you want to pick one of these up, check out the links below um, and get them. They have them available from E Wheels, Alien Rides. Um, I think they have them on Rev Rides as well. Um, check out the links below, guys, and pick one up. They are so much fun for the price telling you i mean it's just that's what it comes down to of why you would get the m10 for is because it just i mean it's like a little pit bike you know it's only a thousand bucks you can have a lot of fun with it you know put some miles on this instead of on your you know your nice wheel or your fancy wheel and just have something to play on something to you know let um company when they come over get on full around on have something you can kind of bash and whatnot and not care about too much but it, it does everything and the whole whole thing i love about this wheel is it's so small and it's not as heavy as those other wheels so when you do crash it and the build quality is incredible on it the whole thing is made out of like metal so when you do crash it there's like there's no inertia to slam into the uh, ground really it's just such a lightweight machine it just kind of bounces off the ground and doesn't get messed up i mean i've slammed this thing on the ground several times trail riding it um where i've slammed it hard guys i'm telling you where it's like the thing just goes bouncing down the trail. I'm talking rolling, hitting, dinging pedals, flying. And, dude, there's no dents on this thing. It is completely fine. And I, there, the whole top part right up there, too, I was kind of worried about that, like that acrylic top part where you can see through it. Um, from what I found, that is very durable, dude. I've, it's flipped over and rolled and smashed on the top of this thing. And there's no, there's not even any cracks or abrasions or scuff marks or anything on it. And I love the LCD like display on this, um, on the top up there, uh, or the digital display on the top. It it's perfect. It shows everything you need to see. It, it shows accurate battery indication right on top up there. Um, one thing I don't like, this is kind of nitpicky, is just the you see the charge port up there. It's kind of hard to open the charge port cover on the front. You got to use like a flathead screwdriver or something to get in there because it's just hard to get your finger in there under that like metal. Um, cage on the outside that kind of metal cage. you see how that power button is on the left and then your charge port is on the right right on the front it's just hard to get the charge port open sometimes if you close it back that's one, one little thing i noticed but other than that i like the pedals on it i think the pedals could be a little bit more spiky like if you want to add some aftermarket pedals make your pedals um like upgrading pedals on this thing i've seen many of them with some like cool like those E-Rides pedals I have on my V12, I think those would be sweet on this little wheel. Um, but the stock ones are fine. I really think, like, the stock ones are nice. For for a $1,000 wheel, the pedals you get on this thing are, are nice. They're, me like, completely metal. Um, they got a little bit of um, spikiness to them. Kind of like some rounded off spikes. But you see right here, I'm not having a problem with them. I'm just wearing these Alpine Star uh, motorcycle shoes. And uh, having good power pads also helps, guys. I got links below if you want to pick up some Grizzly pads for the for your M104. Um, I don't have the link to these specific pads right here, but if you want to pick up some like Grizzly pads, I know those will fit on this thing, and those would be awesome. Like I, they even have baby sized Grizzly pads, guys. That would be perfect for this one. Little baby Grizzly pads that you can put on this thing, and it would be sick. But having good power pads helps a lot because it's you know it's such a small wheel. Being able to just hop over stuff and unweight when you need to and everything, it unleashes a whole different riding dynamic on the M10, which is, like, it, it's a must. Once you put power pads on this thing, you will never go back to not riding it with power pads. Like, once you get to where you can just unweight and the thing jumps up in the air with you, it's awesome. You can do so much more with it once you, once you get it kind of dialed in the way you want it. So... You've probably seen some of these M10s with a street tire on it. And if you want to pick up one that has a street tire on it, guys, if you go to the link, my link below, the Alien Rides link, click on that, 
and then go wh whenever you're checking out you can either choose to get a street tire for a extra 50 bucks and um, have it shipped out with it so it'll come with the knobby tire you see here and then for extra 50 bucks throw in that street tire or either you can get them to go ahead and fit the street tire for you uh, for 150 bucks so they'll go ahead and install it right no it's 125 dollars so if you want to get the M10 with the street tire upgrade on it, it's 125 bucks extra. Which, honestly, guys, I really like the the Manabi tire on this, and I have to, I feel like it rides fine on the road. You want to run these little wheels at a higher tire pressure, guys. So I've run my M104 with a, a little bit of tire slime. I run it with about eight ounces of tire slime in it, and that's just that green um, tire. It's that green tire slime stuff y'all have seen in the you know in walmart since you were a kid that stuff is great in electric unicycles guys because if you do ever get a puncture or anything on the trail it'll automatically seal it and there's a lot of wheels out there guys i, I pretty much run tire slime in every one of my wheels but you especially want to run tire slime in this one because it is a tubeless tire okay and it being a tubeless tire that tire slime does two things um, for for your wheel. Number one, it definitely prevents you know any type of flat or anything like that from happening. This stuff does work wonders, guys. Um, it, it just creates like an extra barrier in there is what it really does. You know, it really just creates an extra barrier inside it of your entire tire. And this, it, I swear by this stuff, and a lot of people in the EUC community do, do as well. But another benefit of it in a small wheel like this. Um, that is a tubeless tire is um, it, it acts as a seal for that whole kind of tubeless tire in there that 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 tire slime it really helps that um, bead seat against the rim so if you're not running it at full 50 psi in there you really are going to have problems with maybe this thing losing air pressure over time if you're especially if you're a heavier rider and you're not running the m104 all the way up there in the high 40s to like 50 psi what you're going to notice is you know you might go out for a ride and your tire will be flat on it and one thing you can do to completely prevent that guys is eight ounces of tire slime just a little bit of tire slime in there and then pump it up you know anywhere from about 42 psi to 50 if you're a heavier rider if you're you know up there over 200 pounds i would definitely be running close to 50 psi if you're a little bit lower on your weight, I would be running about 43 PSI. Is exactly what I'm running with 8 ounces of tire slime. And that really has been perfect. I have not gotten a flat tire ever since I've done that, and it has held at exactly 43 PSI since I did that. Um, before I did that, I had it you know, pumped up from the, the fa how it was from the factory. I just had whatever air pressure they had from the factory in there riding it around. And then I, I went out for a ride and noticed my tire was flat. And then I was like, okay, well, I know what to do here because this is just a, you know, a sm small tubeless tire. And that tire slime tends to really help in a scenario like that. So if you're running into that problem, that's what you got to do to fix it. But other than that, if you do pump this tire up to, you know, high 40s to 50, it really cruises good on the road. You do get that kind of effect of like, if you ever hear the trucks with the knobby tires coming down the road or whatever, you, you know, kind of that road, that purring noise on the road, which I kind of like it. It sounds pretty cool. But if you don't want that, you just want a really, really smooth ride on the road, then you can get that street tire on there. And I think the street tire looks super cool on this little thing. It looks like a little crotch rocket. And also from Alien Rides, you can get a, a front bumper set for 70 bucks, which I think looks really cool on this as well. With the street tire and the front bumper set, it looks like a completely different wheel. It's so cool. But anyways, check them out. Links below, guys. And this little wheel has been... It, it's been great. It really has been. You see the front light on this thing? You can adjust that. So you see how it's kind of pointing down at the road? If I wanted it to be farther up and I wanted my beam, my beam distance to be a little bit farther and it not to be lighting up just the road right in front of me, I can easily just reach down and flip that light wherever I want. I can angle it all the way down, I can angle it all the way up. And that headlight is bright for this little wheel, man. It, it seriously is. And I, I think that also adds just to the coolness of like, the look of it at night when it's riding. I mean, it's so small, but the headlight is just massive, man. It's so bright.
and it's really easy to do all your like backwards riding and stuff as well like you can really improve your skills with backwards riding with just your really technical stuff and i know a lot of people like when it's cold and stuff right now if you're not going on like huge ride and you just want to you know ride around the house or play in the garage or whatever it may be this is a great wheel to do that and like that little backyard course i built it's covered in snow right now but uh, the backyard course I built is just a total blast to ride the M10. It is so much fun. I didn't think that I would be able to hit those jumps. Were not I, I built those jumps like for like an RS19 or like a you know like a 19 inch, 20 inch unicycle to hit. Um, but I was like, man, I can. I feel like if I just kind of eat it, if I just kind of go full send at it with the M10 and then unweight, um, like. I feel like I can clear these gaps, dude. And there's two of them I can clear that I did not think I could clear on this little thing. This like on the backyard jump track. But the the big one I haven't tried yet on it. I'm like super super sketchy. I'm like I'm like, dude, cuz I I feel like I could get enough speed up to it, but like once I jumped in the air, it would be about me kind of jumping forward and not the momentum of the wheel to clear the gap. So I don't know. I might try. I might try it once the snow thaws out. But it it is so much fun. The backyard track on the M10 is a total blast, man. And that you can ride forever too. Like if you build like a backyard track or something, dude, you will. This little thing just goes forever. On like on on a charge. I mean, I rode it all the way across town. I rode like 20 mile bike loops on it. Um, it, it seriously has plenty of battery, man. It, that's one thing that I wouldn't be worried about with this little thing, especially if you get the one, the one thousand one hundred dollar one with the. Let's see. So you can get the seven hundred and fifty watt hour Samsung fifty E cells for one thousand one hundred eighty nine bucks, or you can get the three hundred watt Samsung forty T cells for eight hundred and fifty bucks. Um, for this little thing but i would definitely get the one with 750 watt hours for sure i mean for sure if you're if you're gonna get one of these um and you're not getting it for a kid go ahead and get the 750 watt hour all right some technical specs on this thing guys is the the weight on it is 28.6 pounds exactly for the one with more watt hours in it uh the the 300 watt hour one guys is going to be super lightweight that thing's probably going to be you know close to close to 20 pounds so that's why i'm saying like if you got a little little kid out there you can get them something that would be so like you know unintimidating it'd be so lightweight that they could learn on which i think would be awesome but the no load speed on this thing is 34 miles per hour so expect about, whenever you're on it cruising around, expect about 25, 26 miles an hour, honestly, after the, after that first little bit of drop on it. If you're, like, fresh charged, like I said, you can really take it up to about 28. But that's just for the, you know, immediate fresh charge with a lower weight rider. Uh, the tire size on it is, you know, it's 11-inch tire size on this thing. It's, it is a very small wheel, um, but it is a fun wheel. It comes with an 84, it, this is an 84 volt wheel too, so that's what, another thing to note guys. A lot of the other electric unicycles out right now, the kind of the baseline for the industry is like 100 volt wheels. But I think like this 84 volt wheel right here has, I mean, it's it's great. I really don't see a problem with it at all. Like it, it does what it's supposed to do and it exceeded my expectations when it came to this machine. I would love to see a 100 volt um m10 going forward in the future and i think we will eventually see one but i think this is great for what i mean for what it is i think 84 volts is awesome the one thing about it is it does take a little while to charge dude with the uh stock charger it comes with it is a 1.5 amp charger and so if you run this thing completely completely dead it's going to take you uh you know a handful of hours i'd say about four hours to charge this thing four to five hours to charge this thing fully up um, so that, that's one thing just top it off a lot of people ask like should I run my wheel dead completely um, you know should I top it off after every ride and just top it off after every ride really is usually what I do I, I'm not I, it's really not good for these batteries to um, you know push them all the like that's one of those kind of things that came out of the cell phone era is well you should just 
uh, or back whenever everybody had like the next tails and shit like that. You were just like, well, I guess it was like a rumor of like you should run your battery completely dead and then recharge it from dead. But with EUCs, it's not like that. You can get more battery life out of it. Like the optimal range for these batteries that are in EUCs is to honestly keep them between 80% charged and like 30% charged. And if you could keep them in that range, hypothetically, that would be the best, um, you know, opt optimal environment to keep the batteries in. If you if you know if you know what I mean, or or charge um, range to keep them in. But not everybody's going to do that because there's really no point. Um, because you want to get all the range out of your wheel. You want to have it fully charged. You know, if you buy a wheel with, you know, seven, you know, 750 watt hours, you want to get all the use out of it whenever you're on your ride. So that's why people, um, if you buy like one of the uh, rapid chargers, there's actually a setting on there where it will cut off when it gets to 80% charge. So some people that are real weird about that type of stuff um, and just want to get, you know, their absolute most out of their batteries, they, they, you can get a charger that does that on some of the wheels but with this one right here if you're just getting it just getting into the hobby and curious about that just after every ride just plug it in and top it off it doesn't matter if it's you know if you use two percent battery or if you drained it all the way dead just plug it in after every ride and you know charge it back up it's the best thing to do but i, I really think this is a, a stellar entry level wheel um it it's just unintimidating, man. I think anybody can learn on this because it's just not much weight. It's not something that, like, one of the big problems with EUCs is if you're trying to teach somebody to ride in your own, um, like, say if you're out and about on your Sherman and somebody wants to learn how to ride EUCs, that's not like a wheel you just want to hand over to somebody real quick and be like, hey, yeah, learn on this. Because, I mean, they're going to crash that thing and tear it all up, but it's just so much weight and inertia to slam into the ground um if somebody missteps or whatever it is but with this dude i mean anybody can learn on it like literally it doesn't matter if you you could crash it a thousand times in the learning process and it's so lightweight it's not going to get damaged and i think that's one of the like big things that people are overlooking about this is the in the learning phase i mean it's impossible to really tear this thing up it is so small and so lightweight in comparison to any of the bigger wheels that you, you would try to learn on um, it's just not going to get damaged. So I think it's a great starting point. Uh, it just, you know, in, in that fact alone right there. So one thing I, I talked about in an, another video of mine is out of all the wheels that I have, I, I had a friend come over and was interested in buying EUCs, and I gave him my old M Super V3S Plus. Uh, and, you know, I was like, dude, you, when you come out here, this will just, this will be your wheel. You can ride it, you know, set it up the way you want to with whatever power pad you want to. And uh, he ended up wanting to get a wheel for himself where he lived at. And out of trying all the wheels I got out there, man, out of trying like the V12, you know, the Sherman, all those different wheels, he ended up wanting to get the M10 out of all of them. And it's just because the price is right on this thing, dude. It's only, the, that's one of the biggest things is getting into the hobby is the price of this little wheel. And it's only a thousand bucks. And he, he got it. He's a heavier dude than I am, but he loves it. He keeps his like right in his passenger seat of his um, Jeep, and he takes it everywhere. He literally uses this thing all the time now and absolutely loves this little wheel. Uh, and I, I really don't think he could have gotten a better wheel. I really think it suits him perfectly. I think the small form factor being able to just, um, the portability of it, and the fact it doesn't take up a bunch of room, it's unintrusive, you know, you just, um, he's got dogs and other equipment and all that type of stuff he's trying to deal with, and just having a small little wheel that you can, having the car as your last mile vehicle man being able to just take this out park wherever you want to and then ride in you know you got 15 to 20 miles of range right in this little thing depending upon how you ride it if you're all out you know riding it straight line top speed expect about 15 to 18 miles of range if you're riding it on trails like i do here you can honestly do to get over 20 miles because a lot of the sections you're not going full speed and if you're just on single track stuff cruising around these wheels get insane range on stuff like this even on uphills and stuff man if you're not all out top speed on it and you're cruising trails and whatnot like one one of the disadvantages is that right there you saw that crash is with the little wheel 
you got to watch out for rocks and any type of stuff. So that's why the power pads are great. And if you can see the rocks before you hit them, like I just did, uh, just unweight and jump over them. That's kind of the one thing you got to do with this. Like I know some people that are new to EUC, whenever they see um, any of the YouTube videos, they're like, well, what happens when you hit a pothole? Yeah, you kind of saw right there. That was a good example of what happened. Would ha what would happen um, if you didn't unweight or if you didn't see it? That was just a little rock in the trail that I hit right there to cause that fall. But one of the things you can do, guys, is just unweight and just ollie over it. You got to see the damn thing, though. I didn't see that rock in the trail. I was looking far ahead down the trail, and that rock was sticking up, and I just snagged it. You know, and that's just one of the things with this wheel is if you're riding trails and stuff like that you got to understand that it is like a novelty thing and that's what makes it fun it it feels like you're riding those single track trails at 50 miles an hour i mean it is so tiny and it's so technical it seems like you are hauling ass bro and like I'm, that's what i'm saying is so much fun about it is because it looks so unintrusive dude it looks like just such a little you know a little unintrusive little thing that's not doing anything it's so tiny you can put put it in a backpack but when you're all out man 25 miles an hour on this whether it be on the road or on the trail i mean it seems like you're hauling ass it's, it's, it really does seem like you're hauling ass but um you see right here i got it in some mud one thing it does not handle very well is, is mud i think this is just some thick you know kind of sloppy mud i got in right here but uh it, I mean, with the off-road tire, you can see, I mean, it'll handle mud, but it's just a small diameter wheel, so it doesn't, it doesn't cruise straight through it like the bigger wheels do. Like, if I was on, like, a master or something right here, just dart through it like nothing. But it is fun. I mean, in the scale sense of mudding on an electric unicycle, I mean, this is pretty fun right here. Cruising around, getting a little bit muddy. Uh, it's it's a fun wheel man and all in all it's just the best way to put it it is so much fun and i, I really do think anybody would love one like is it is it going to be something that replaces your daily driver if you already have an euc no is it going to be something that um it would be a perfect beginner wheel yes it's going to be like a perfect second or third wheel if you already have them for sure um it's just it's definitely not, not one of those things like right here he's on the v3s but he, see he's um kind of a, a newer rider but i was able to just you know kind of outpace him even on a smaller diameter wheel like this so and I, we got plenty of range we're way far away from the house right here and we got plenty of range to do what we need to do i didn't have range anxiety or anything we weren't going for a huge long ride but still going for a decent cruise you know this thing's slinging mud. He said, dude, it was loose for tailing mud everywhere. Tiny and powerful. The Beagoat M104 excels in portability and potency. It's equipped with 11-inch wheel. M104 is the smallest electric unicycle you can buy on the retail market. Um, just pop it in a backpack. You can stash it under your desk. Keep it in your passenger seat. Easily hit 25 miles an hour on it. Uh, it's, it's great. It's honestly a fun wheel. Um, nothing compares to the freedom and control this thing provides. It's lightweight, elegant frame, makes it easy to control. You just think and it goes. As a result, tricking and idling on it are incredibly easy. Plus, it's just plain fun gliding through the streets on what you know you can fit in your backpack. Uh, it's great for commuters, and I think it's great for beginners, and just somebody that wants a novelty wheel to play on. It's small, it's fast, um, for, it's for starters and inner city commuters, really. Uh, who would find this thing to be a great wheel whether hopping out for a lunch break or you know riding your m10 for, for home uh, commuting down to college if you do using this thing to run around a college campus or anything like that this is just primo man perfect for that um, if you want to pick one up guys hit the links below and pick one up from either alien rides or e-wheels below or either rev rides um, and let me know if y'all have any questions about it. I love this little wheel, and I think it's just a solid bang for the buck. And it's great, man. It's great for kids, beginners, you know, commuters, and people that want, like, a pit bike style wheel to play on. Kitty, you want some snacks? Just some snacks? Come on. Come on. Come on, everybody.